Hi guys, this is Niger Business TV. We're live at the Social Media Week 2019 in Landmark, Lagos, Nigeria. It's a wonderful, great experience, a gathering of digital enthusiasts, social media gurus and experts. We're here to give you a lowdown of what went down, right? So guys, stay tuned. We're Besides, who says it and when you say it? Because uh, my story or my my uh, my ten months of research or uh, ten years of investigating, and I can sit on the first page of the Google search engine, or it can be far away in the ten or twentieth page. And so, in other words, limiting or deciding when people get to see the good work that I have done. In the same way also with uh, Facebook, you know, I put the story maybe on my on my page, but then Facebook gets to decide how many people get to see it and when they get to see it. How do you respond to this? I mean, how do you see the role of um, Google, for instance, in the spread of fake news? Okay. Um, I mean, so I'll start from where Nicholas, right? Uh, so fake news for misinformation or disinformation. As you said, is a spin on an existing problem. Right? Uh, and first of all, you have to understand the motivations. What drives people to want to spread such things? And sometimes it could be political gain, as it is during elections. It could be just moment, momentary need for virality. Just person just wants to be popular for whatever reason. And sometimes it's momentary, it's monetary. Right? Some people want to make money by bringing people to their side and gaining traffic and all that. So there are times that you have information that is deliberately, deliberately put together just to further a certain narrative or just spread propaganda. So that's where I am concerned as a journalist. You know, in the past it was uh, it was not easy to get stories like that to move around because you still need it. You needed to interface with the newspapers, or you needed to get to a TV house, and as and as such, I mean, between the checks here and there, so so many so much of that information doesn't doesn't pass the test because of that stringent gatekeeping. But now with social media, it's all different. I can turn on my phone and and, and record the video and put it on YouTube, you know, or I can just put it out on my Instagram page, which Facebook is still responsible for. Or the Days, which is WhatsApp. I mean, I just but, and when my kids say it's not fair. And you just write it up and then click the forward button. So those are the kind of content that I am particularly interested in here. The ones that can have an offline repercussion. Okay, so got it. There's no I mean, there's no point just having a panel about people just spreading funny satirical fake stories. When it comes to stories that have the potential for offline violence, stories that are deliberately false, that are designed to create a certain amount of discomfort or generate a certain reaction that is detrimental either to the people who are reading it or to the community in which they live, we take this very, very seriously on Facebook. And we're generating about 3 million pieces of content a day. We have an internal capacity for our air that can stand globally. And then continent-wise and nationally, we also have fact, um, content policy reviewers that are working 24-7 to look at, at uh, uh, the content that is posted in Nigeria. But there's also something that I should like to people. There is, with the, apart from our own internal capacity to review stuff, people have to report content to us. Nigeria has one of the lowest reporting levels of problematic content. I'm not going to call it pretty wide, and I think I'm going to much detail about the personal account issue, but I would like to say that we don't arbitrarily flag things. There are not people sitting there checking, I don't like this, let me flag it. There are particular steps that have to go, that have to be taken before an article is flagged or before it is taken down. It is either, it is either flagged because it has triggered 
the defaults in our community policies, our community standards, our AI has picked it up, or somebody has flagged it for being content that they don't find appropriate. When you get a piece of news or information, I think it's a um, fake. There are processes of going through. For instance, if um, you have to first check, that's where you come very. Uh, when somebody gives a quote, you just grab the quote and throw it into the for the chair. When the result comes out, you find out do we have a credible news organization reporting it. And of course, everybody knows who is credible and the not so credible ones are. Now, if, that is, if it's a public person that says that, you also have to find out, pick out them and confirm. On so and so date, you were quoted as saying this and this. Is that true? You just actually say this. If, for example, you report, um, and you will not dare let people say, you know, and they will get back to you, oh, yeah, I, 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 I said that. For example, I need to find you, um, and I'm very uh, notorious um, politician and publisher of fake news, uh, Joe Ugoi of the ABC. And he's known all around the public of fake news. So he posted a picture of the Titanic. And I called him and said, you, you posted this and this and this and this and this and said, yes, I have my son. Now, who are the sources? Oh, I have my son that gives me this information. So and I trust them. So for instance, he didn't deny, he confirmed that he had been posted that and he got the full results. So he didn't tell me which source he was sure that it's on his Facebook and he didn't it. That is one. Two, this is one. There was a for Nigeria. Because you don't have a kind of record. I mean, like in the US, it's easy for um, Western reporters to be in. I mean, they have a federal record, FYI, and other. For instance, if I want to check the legal state government uh, official, it's the fact that. Oh, it's the fact that. It's the fact that. It's the fact that. It's the fact that. It's the fact You don't get anything. So, what do you do? In such a case, you have to find out what is out there in the public and compare and compare. Ask the expert. If it's a health related information, and somebody says, oh, for instance, but if you have a real cancer, like you have a medical expert, you say, you have to call the expert. Academics who understand what, and they all know, I mean, if you forget that, thank you very much. As always, the campus map is behind the registration stand to direct you around the campus. Also, make sure you pay a visit to the African Next Stage to explore rich culture of Africa, the art painting, the library, also vendors, foods. Make sure you stop by, and if you're still trying to figure out where to go to get there, the info deck is available to guide you. Thank you. Showcase the people receiving skills than some things that are throwing us there. And so, what we do in communities, the human habits that we've been talking about, we give them out free of charge in these communities that we go to. But you would never see images of those on social media. The only images you see are images of people that are acquiring skills because you need to tell the story of the people who are willing to acquire skills and people who are receptive to knowledge. Not the people who are just about receiving, receiving, and receiving. Um, it's important for us to tell the story of what we're doing, but we should also remember that some other persons are involved in this story, and you do not elevate yourself at the expense of some other person's dignity. And it's important for us to remember all of this when we want to push out what we do. That's the danger of telling simple stories. Thank you, you are the only one involved in the storytelling process. Thank you very much. I try to think of other source of income. That's why I have my restaurant, Just a Farm, which I don't know if anybody knows that I own a restaurant and I'm constantly on flat me. Like I always look for other things to occupy myself with apart from just making videos. Because if you go on Instagram right now, everybody's a comedian on Instagram. Everybody. So what what makes
makes you different. The fact that they don't just call you a Norwegian, but they, they can attach other things to your name. And, and I have a few stops making those things because this is what I enjoy doing. I have passion for making people laugh. And my content is real. Like the message I pass out, everybody can relate to it. I think that's what all makes me stand out. Our algorithms, both on Facebook and Instagram, prioritize what we call meaningful social interactions. Actually, a year ago on Facebook, there was a massive change to the algorithm to favor content that comes from actual people rather than organizations and publishers. So um, uh, the, these changes uh, have uh, led to people like, uh, uh, like these ladies that are producing content that feels real and true. Uh, and this kind of content is prioritized. It's no coincidence that we see on Instagram uh, an explosion of content that is unadorned. Essentially, in the past, the feed on, on Instagram, for example, was really dedicated to really being extremely pretty, uh, the, you know, portraying a lifestyle that is not real, etc. Of course, you still have a lot of that. But what is working is uh, the, the unadorned, real, uh, unmade up uh, comedy. Um, uh, shorter content, uh, spontaneous stories are massive and actually we feel, we consider that in about five years, stories, these 15 second videos that are taken on the fly uh, without that much preparation and without, you know, fancy editing are going to be the future of our platforms. The ones you think is not funny is the one they actually <coughs> like, oh, trust me. I've had videos that sometimes I even say to my friends, is this one in the blank? This one no end that. I'll just post it because I've tried, I've shot it. it it's, it's a lot of work. You create, you shoot, you edit. So you have nothing to lose. Just post it. If they don't laugh after two hours, you delete it. You have nothing to lose. Do you understand? So always post it. The ones that I've always thought are not funny, they are always the best. Trust me. So don't ever stop halfway. Just complete it. Um, when I started, there was no graphic templates to follow. You just kind of use your imagination to to maybe give rates to clients. And I remember before my first big advert, um, a brand reached out to me and they were like, okay, what are you going to charge for doing this, doing that? And by the time I calculated all the work, I charged them, I think maybe 20k. And then this, that was the, the brand that actually helped my life because the man came up to me and he called me and was like, I hope you are joking with that. <laughs> he was like, did you see all the things? I was charging him 2k5 for this, 1.5 for that. By the time he, he then created an email and told me to copy everything he put in that email and resend it to him as a new email, and by the time I did it, it was over one million naira. I was like, Jesus! And when I was like, my heart was like, boom, boom. So, when he did that, and then I actually got paid, I was like, oh my goodness, like, this is, this is real. So from then, I started giving myself a brain, like, just, if I give you rates and you don't come back and say, ah, to see if you reduce this in my head, I'm like, ah. So I gauge it like that. And another thing I do is um, I send emails to my colleagues in the industry just once in a while, like, give me your rates. And then I measure based on, okay, you have one million followers, I only have 200. So I'll kind of calculate my rates based on that sometimes. And everything is dependent. It depends on the brands that are coming to you. So I can't charge a big brand the amount I'm going to charge a small business. So by the time you send me your email, I go and research about you and all of that. And then after I research, if I see that, oh, this is a big brand, I give you your big brand rates. And if it's a small business, I don't want to destroy your life. <laughs> small rates. So there are different ways of telling. And then there's some um, online apps I can't remember what it is. I don't know if it's social media or something, but there is one I use a certain time when.
when I was getting a lot of um, international, um, what's it called, advice, and then they tell you, okay, this is what you should charge if you have this kind of engagement. But it doesn't really work in Nigeria because I can't imagine charging somebody the kind of amount I would charge in pounds or in dollars. So those are the different ways I figure out how to charge or uh, one thing I'd like to say is that it's not necessary to have big numbers of followers. Um, I know of a creator, she has only about 1,500, 2,000 followers, that's it. Yet, she has an exclusive partnership with a brand. And that is because she is in a very small niche. She talks about one thing only. And in her case, it's natural, natural hair. And within the natural hair range, because well, as you know, we have a full range of different types of hair. She talks about one type, and there's a brand that we wanted to associate with her because of that. So if you propose something that is different, that is unique to you, you will find that a brand that wants to associate with you. How does social media impact and influence your work and the teaching? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I came late. Uh, I know the design of this place, though. Well, uh, I've always told the story, and every time I tell it, it feels like I haven't told it before. For me, it was pre-planned. It was not intentional. You know, it was when I started it. I saw that there was something there, and then I became very steadfast with it. You know, it was not like from the old get go, I knew this is what I wanted to do. When I was in school, I didn't study this. I've always, I never took interest in things of this nature. I loved it, but not as something I would be doing as a person. You know, it was as, it just, it came to me. It was never the dream. But I started living the dream and started to pursue it as a genuine thing. So when I started then, uh, it was, at first, I didn't pay attention to it. I put out the first video, it was yeah. nice. Yeah. It, was, it was not Instagram, it was just WhatsApp and, um, you know, so a few people liked it. Some thought it was beneath my, was wild. yeah, it was, it was terrible. And you know, people would always want to speak for you, they yeah. know what is best for you. I liked it. I liked what I was doing. I liked the fact that the filter made me look extremely, you know, funny. And but some people felt it was it didn't speak well of me. My mom didn't like the idea. She would always call me and say, oh, "My beginner, God has made you a fine boy." Yeah, this place is a family. You know, things like that. It was not only saying on this screen. Can you just stop your pictures? <laughs> Can you just stop putting words in the mouth? I actually don't want you to get angry to me. No, no, no. These are the things we are talking about. You are asking me a question. I'm answering you. Which one are you not speaking for my family? Are you my mother? Which one is my discussing the family? They don't do things like that. As you to get with you, I can try to tell you. As I was saying, and as you were listening, I don't listen. But I know you are listening. So, yes. So I saw there was something there. I've always had, I've always, um, Let's say I can consider myself the class clown, but I can take it seriously all through my primary, secondary, and tertiary level. I was a class clown that was forming swag, like, nah, this thing, I know to talk, I'm going to be like, say, you know, so I always wait when everybody's quiet and I just drop a line or two, and I'm like, oh, I talk, I say, I talk, you know. But then I, I had a friend who who saw something big in the idea of what I was doing and said, ah, keep on talking about these things now. And it was easy for me because I love the idea of ranting. It comes natural to you. Yes. Just as Frank said, when he started, when the whole thing, you know, got orchestrated, the idea of unemployment amongst the Nigerian youth was what pioneered him into doing most of the skits in that angle. And people could relate to it. You know, but for me, ranting, I wouldn't say I complain, I wouldn't say I nag, even though I do. I know they were hungry for my family. If my sister constantly finds it annoying that a man will complain about almost anything. I can see something wrong in everything. Everything, you know. Influencers are already there. 
making Nigerians happy, they have a following. I don't see anything bad if they offset some of the costs of producing these videos by calling influencers and saying, you know what, we're going to make this available for you to create videos in this direction. Nevertheless, we have been doing it. I mean, if you go to, I, like I mentioned, about some of those things, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a, I do a lot of political satire. So if you go to my Instagram page, at Frank Norman, as well, my Instagram market, and I send me that. If you go to my page, you scroll down, you see some of those songs there, tracks there. It's not really in our place to decide what we want to do with it. Don't forget, we are mostly in the entertainment uh, industry. So the political thing, a lot of people want to shadow from politics, from hardcore politics, because of, because of the backlash and success, they think around it, because of the followers too. You know, but, and we, people are very careful. But we have a responsibility. Yes, I agree. Mean, we have a responsibility to tell, let people know. Get your voter's card, register, don't sell your votes, vote for the person you think is responsible and can take Nigeria forward, uh, ask questions, hold your leaders and take them. Yes, last is you can write about that. We'll find a good system about that. I can do a dream track about that. We can. But don't forget the fact that we are people like you too. We are burning our personal money to do a lot of the work that organizations and agencies have been paid to do this campaign for. Nothing bad, because maybe you get into you. If you call people like this too, they say small budget to create a video because now the electricity that they use is using this data, not the mind. Now, how do you sell your idea? Now, 
you first of all have to understand, and you'll see this in the following slides as we continue to go through that, what's your background gist, what is your key message, and what's your implementation plan. Just run through. Now, what success criteria must all of those things meet? These are the seven success criteria. Run through. Run through to the next slide. Run through to the next slide. Run through. And when I listen to all three, you know, all three of us speak, I realize that it's something that, you know, we really need to fix. Now, you come up with a big idea. You ask yourself, I have something I call the ABC guide that helps you define what your business is all about. Now, by defining what your business is about, you're able to think through your business in very clear terms. So I say, we help you to be by doing so. Now, let's see what we is. Next slide, tools. So we, your business A, your customer. B, what product are you trying to solve? So, for instance, uh, so your business name is Dix Farms, Clicks Farms. So, who are your customers? Or you plan to compete. So is that you collaborate or compete or 
You stole my girl or you the boat. And so I'll show you what that means. Alright, next. So yes, usually you want to, to just pause. So usually you want to, sometimes you want to create a control over you by achieving something similar to what Facebook had done, you know, when you first started. And you want to create a control in you by achieving. And you want to be the one to have the intellectual it. You need to ask yourself, do you have what it takes in terms of finances, manpower, and everything else? Now, uh, and this is this is what I usually hear. Of course, I'll, I'll use here Lagos as a case study. I don't know how that other ones want to make this big, but this is what's usually the case for most of the people that I speak with. You want to create a control of your mind. You need to ask yourself, do you have what it takes? Uh, to do this. Number two, we all want to disrupt. We want to come in, or rather go in, and we want to struggle with the big boys, you know, that are usually the experience. You say you want to compete, you know, directly take them by surprise with this education. But again, you need to ask yourself, do you have, you know, what it takes? This is not to say that you should look at this compass and pick one. It's okay to have a combination of two, it's okay to have a of three, but you need to be very, very clear. The next one. You want to focus on creating value for partners in the existing value chain and security with them. The best reference I could find for this is Head Attractor. I don't know how many of us know who Head Attractor. But I'll focus on building a boat because that's essentially you know, what we need. Uh, they maintain control of the innovation and find a way to create value within the marketplace. Uh, basically, here yeah, you focus on being a great option. You look for good partners and help you achieve you know, your business goal and the cost uh, your business in So, guys, here you have it. It's a lot of interesting information, and that's what we bring to you at Nigeria Business TV. So, stay tuned and subscribe. And hope to see you at Social Media Week 2020. Catch you.